Hello everybody, this is your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series with the U.S. Navy Destroyers. This is the Tier 8 Benson class of destroyers. There were 30 of these destroyers built in World War II between 1939 and 1943. Four were lost during the war, and one of those was repaired and was able to return to the war and serve throughout the war, and was then later scrapped at the end of the war. The design is basically a product improved Sims class with enhanced machinery and arrangement designed for better torpedo resistance. I'm not sure that's actually borne out in the actual gameplay. I don't know that there is a raw reduction there to note that. It is the first U.S. Navy destroyer with quintuple launchers in the game. It is only about 60 tons heavier than the Sims, and of all the ships that have a AA hole in the game, this one actually had six of this destroyer class that were modified specifically with more light A armament to repel kamikaze attacks. Of course, it's hard to talk about the Benson class without talking about one of the most notable U.S. destroyers in World War II history. That's the USS Laffey, which fought in the Battle of Cape Esperance, in which she participated in the sinking of the sinking of or severely damaging of Furutaka, Aoba, and Fubuki. She later then went on to fight in the naval battle of Guadalcanal, where she passed within 20 feet of the Japanese battleship Hai. Laffey unleashed her torpedoes in that battle and raked the, bri the bridge of the Hai with 5-inch gunfire, which severely damaged the ship, however, did not sink it. It also severely injured the admiral of the Japanese fleet, which drastically reduced his ability to command the Japanese force during that fight. During that fight, she lost two of her gun batteries, and when she was faced with two battleships on one side, two destroyers on the other, her captain, Lieutenant Commander William Hank, ordered the Laffey to continue fighting with the three remaining 5-inch batteries in a no-quarters point-blank duel. During that fight, she was hit by a 14-inch shell from Hai, which crippled her, and then finally a torpedo put Laffey out of action for good. The order to abandon ship came when a sudden explosion ripped her apart with a severe loss of life. After her actions in the battle of, naval battle of Guadalcanal, she was issued the Presidential Unit Citation and three bronze battle stars for her actions in World War II. Very heroic act. I think that pretty much uh, summarizes the whole generation of men and women who served during World War II from the U.S. Well, as, as well as from all nations. I, I can't just say that just for the U.S. In terms of gameplay, the best way to describe her is the Fletcher Light. She's basically a Tier 8 Fletcher, and the Fletcher is an absolutely incredible destroyer and is really the peak of the des U.S. destroyer line. And this ship doesn't give up much to a Fletcher. Not much at all. She has great torpedoes, Great guns, great concealment, great maneuverability, and is just an absolute menace of the sea. Her torpedoes are very quick to reload. They have usable range. They do a shit ton of damage. And they have great torpedo arcs. And of course, as with all the U.S. destroyers, they're incredibly powerful destroyer hunters and incredibly powerful in a close-in knife fight. Let's talk about her in context of the game and her stats. With Survivability Expert, she does have 18,600 hit points, or without it, 15,200? No, 400. Yeah, 50,400. It still has next to no armor, although we are improving in armor. She can kind of sort of take hits. Her main battery consists of five of the 5-inch 38 caliber Mark 30 guns. These are also serving in the dual-purpose configuration for anti-aircraft duty. They do have a main battery firing range of 11.6 kilometers. As we talked about in the intro to this, the Benson class does have 
two quintuple torpedo tube launchers. That's 10 total torpedoes with a 9.2 kilometer range, 55 knot top speed, and they do 16,633 damage per torpedo hit. And to top, put the icing on the cake, they only have a 1.1 kilometer detection range by sea. She does have a much improved AA complement, and this is just on the B hole where we don't give up one of our 5 inch gun mounts for more AA. It is serviceable. The Benson will shoot down aircraft. It will do it fairly reliably even without defensive fire. She has a 38 knot top speed. With speed boost, she can go over 40 knots. 570 meter turning circle and a 3.2 second rudder shift time. In terms of detection range, without concealment expert, she has a 6.4 kilometer detection range with a 5.8 kilometer detection range, and she has a 3.2 kilometer detection range by air. Let's talk about how we set her up. Me, I'm taking main battery arm mod modification one, obviously. Aiming systems mod one, reduce those, detect the uh, dispersion as well as increasing how fast our torpedo tubes turn. We don't care about the secondaries part of that. In terms of other options, there still really isn't any other options there. If you do decide to take the C hole, there is the option of getting the AA guns mod two, if you want to run her as an AA boat. I am taking propulsion systems mod one. I don't know why I'm taking Propulsion Systems Mod 1. This should be Damage Control Systems Mod 1. I'll have to change that after this video. Rudder Shift, so the Steering Gear is Mod 2. And finally, we get our first 2 million credit option to pick. We have our options between Target Acquisition Systems Mod 1 and Concealment Systems Mod 1. I would take Concealment Systems Mod 1. Minus 10% to Detectability Range. That brings it down to that 6.4 kilometers and makes her an absolute menace of the sea. In the video we're about to watch of the battle, it's an over 100,000 damage game. It demonstrates the gunplay, it demonstrates the torpedoes. There's a lot going on in this video. This is a great ship, so let's get on to the battle video. All right, in this battle, we are going to have, I believe it's a tier nine fight. I don't believe there's any tier tens in this fight. And we are going to see, like I said before, a lot of the gunplay. It is a short battle. It only has 8 versus 8 rather than 12 versus 12, but that's okay. There is a Fletcher on each side, a Sims on the other team, and a Fubuki, whereas we have a Benson and a Fubuki. As you can see, there's... Ah, there he goes. You can see the stats of the Fletcher player there and, and comparing that to some of the other ships. As with all US destroyers, you know, we excel in contesting caps. So that's what we're going to do in this battle. We're going to go take A. I'm hopefully going to be supported by the cruisers in this. If I'm not, that could be very, very ugly. And of course, this battle took place in 5.9. I'm recording this video in 5.10. So your mileage may vary on some of the aspects of this gameplay. And also, I, I don't know if they were still working on the matchmaker at this point. I don't think they were. As you can see, we pop speed boost right off the bat. And the goal here is to get to the cap as fast as possible to contest it, because we do not want to give up caps in this game. Unfortunately, it won't be until the end of this game that we actually take another, a second cap. So, I don't know what happened with regards to that. Now, like I said, the Benson is a Fletcher Light. You can see the torpedo reload time is a minute 40-ish without any of the torpedo reload skills on the captain yet. That will be one of the things that will go on this captain at a later date. <laughs> and our first customer of the day, a Pepsi-Cola, Captain Maester. Now, this, this battle that's coming up here... 
is a good demonstrator of the reasons why we need to remember to to switch shell types. In certain engagements, there are distinct advantages to using certain shell types. Here we are contesting A. So now we are starting our cap to A. The Pepsi Cola knows what's up. There is also a destroyer in here. And the reason I know that is because the cap has stopped. And he is not, the Pepsi Cola is not in the battle. Ah, there's the edge of the smoke. Let's see if we can't maybe get our torpedoes off on the Pepsi Cola before we have to switch back to guns. And I don't think. Nope. Oh, we're detected. It's a Fubuki. All right. So the Fubuki's guns should not be underestimated. Okay, if you've never gotten a gun battle with the Fubuki, they do hit like a truck. They just have very slow reload speeds. We're going to go ahead and we're going to launch a wide spread on the torpedoes in the hopes that we can get him to eat a couple of those. Because frankly, I don't want to have to deal with it. Now he's on fire twice. The Pepsi Cola is enjoying his engagement with us. And the Fubuki's going to eat a torpedo and die. There he goes. He would have eaten three torpedoes in this mess. We're going to turn around and we're going to use the smoke that we laid to continue to harass this Pensacola as soon as he comes back up into spotting range. And you can see we've already lost half of our hit points. And and if I did not have Survivability Expert on this, I would be 3,200 hit points shy of... I'd be 3,200 hit points closer to death. So here we are shooting AP at a Pensacola that is broadside to us at 5.5 kilometers. You're going to start seeing the Citadel ribbons pop up here. Give it a second. We're going to adjust our aim so that they start impacting a little bit further to the rear. We are still doing about 1,000 damage a salvo. There's the first Citadel. There's the second Citadel. And we're just going to keep this up. Another 1,000 damage. Oh, he's going to get away from us before we get another Citadel ribbon. I don't think so. We're going to go chase him down. <laughs> yes, come back, Pepsi. I want to play with you. I want to show you my lovely, delicious AP shells. Yes, I want to AP you. I'm not sure if that's a euphemism or not. <laughs> Alright, so let's get around this island here. He makes the foolish decision to turn in. Now he's assuming it's just me and these cruisers here, but really the whole battle fleet is, is over here. So we've lost... Two ships, a cruiser and a destroyer, they've lost basically the same. And here we go again with the Citadel string. So, he's not even paying attention to me. He's traversing to try and get him. Oh, that hurt like a truck. But we get two more Citadels and we knock him out. Now, at this point, had I not had Survivability Expert on this captain... Yes, four Citadels. Had I not had Survivability Expert on this captain... We would be very, very close to death. We are close to death enough as it is, but you can see it would be basically 1,800 hit points is all we would have left without it. So survivability expert to me is unquestionably one of the most important skills that we can have as a U.S. destroyer captain. Finally, we cap A. We are ahead in ships, just barely. And they have two caps. Now, one, one recommendation I do make, that I do want to make to people, is that they use their torpedo lead indicator to figure out where some of these battleships are going and to use it to their advantage. Now, in this case, the Iowa had turned back in towards the B, and I, I was questioning whether or not she would actually come my way or if she would do something else. Well, she does end up finally coming our way. Now, because it is a battleship, we're going to launch, and we're going to pray that a lot of those torpedoes hit. Of course, with the scout plane there, it seems unlikely at best. Of course, we're going to sit here and try and bait him into, into these torpedoes. We're going to use our guns. We're going to sit and plink, and we are doing a fairly decent amount of damage. Now remember, when you're sitting in smoke, especially when there's other destroyers around, there's a Fletcher up there, you want to be very cognizant of incoming torpedo fire. We briefly take a minute there to shoot at the Fletcher to try and salt him up a little bit, but uh, we end up missing. 
This Iowa is going to take some of the torpedoes from the Fubuki, who manages to see my torpedoes and, and take up the slack where they missed. Which is perfectly fine by me. So we'll just sit here and we will continue to rake them. Now, I'm, I've been told that AP on a broadside battleship on the superstructure can yield some big damage numbers. Now, unfortunately, I, uh, I don't see those numbers. So we're going to switch back to, to HE. And we're going to try and start this North Carolina on fire. Thankfully, I've got a large amount of support here. So if push comes to shove, you know, we we're able to take advantage of them and retreat without issue. Also, the smoke for U.S. destroyers lasts a very long time. And it's going to last until you reach basically the one-minute countdown marker on the smoke charge. So we've got about 30 seconds left of the smoke. We're going to take full and distinct advantage of it. Well, now we're shooting blind trying to hit this, this North Carolina and start him on fire. But, uh, well, he'll pop up here eventually. And as always, we, okay, so we got a Baltimore that's 10 clicks out. We need to be very cautious of him because he does have radar. It's relatively short range, but it lasts for freaking ever. We have five seconds left in smoke, so we're going to launch torpedoes. Now, I wish I had uh, been a little bit further forward on that, because uh, this next torpedo salvo, as you guys will watch and witness, isn't going to be the world's greatest. There's that pesky Fletcher again, but you can see that we've got a four-tenths of a kilometer of detection range. And we will wish Mr. Penguin Boys goodbye. Unfortunately, he won't die because of this torpedo salvo. And I realize that right about now, which is why you see the torpedo cam. We get two torpedo hits in the first, and then finally three with a high caliber. Almost got him. We have taken him out of the fight because now he's sitting there dueling with an Atlanta who also has torpedoes. So we're going to focus on this Fletcher and see if we can't assist him in submarining because, let's face it, one less Fletcher is one less destroyer. He has no idea that I'm here for some odd reason. He is red misting on a Fubuki. Aha! His first shells come my way. It's almost like he decided, you know, hey, we're just going to go ahead and ignore that Benson, you know, the, the one thing in this... the one thing on the, the enemy team right now that actually has... Enough guns in range of me to actually do a lot of damage that Atlanta is still trying to chase him around this side of the island. Make sure we don't hit his torpedoes. And all that's left is a Baltimore. A Baltimore. And we're at 100,687 damage. And we're not even done with this battle at all. So the Baltimore was last seen just north in our spawn. We're going to go up and... Well, we've got Fletcher Smoke. It lasts for freaking ever, so let's go use it. The Atlanta has gone to, to Cap B, so that's good. That's good. Like I said, it takes us until the very end of the game to actually Cap B. Well, they're still technically ahead in points, even though they're down in ships. Had we not been able to Cap B and at least get our points moving faster than theirs, it could have very well been a problem. Lots of holes in this poor Benson. I almost feel like what it would have been like to be Commander William Hank, the battle of the naval battle of Guadalcanal. But uh, we will. I will go spot. That way we can see this poor guy. Although the Atlanta is going to end up actually spotting him before I do, and because of that, I'm going to go pop smoke. So the Atlanta's got full control of him. We've got we've got smoke here, but I have no idea how long it's going to last. I'm checking my torpedo arcs, and then I realize that the Atlanta, if I launch torpedoes right now, I actually stand a much better chance of hitting the, the Atlanta than I do the Baltimore, which, you know, we don't, we don't want to launch torpedoes at friendlies. We do want to launch them at the red ships because we are here to shoot the red ships. We are shooting AP at this Baltimore. We are hoping that we can get some relatively large numbers from this fight. He's maneuvering a lot, and we just need to keep adjusting. And we're going to start getting... Yep, check the torpedo arcs just to see what he's doing. He's slowing down. See, this is one more reason why 
got to pay attention. And continuing our salvos. Continuing 107,000. 108,000. And then he gets taken out. So 108,791 damage. As you can see, a good mix of AP and HE. 6,992 experience. And of course, we've got the gold damage there. Look at those ribbons. Gonna end up first on the team with 2,273 base XP and a large number of credits. Anyway, I really enjoy this ship. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As with everything, like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your Peacekeeper with the How to Play USN Benson. Thanks for watching.